Are you interested in updating your RuneScape graphics so that you can go from this to this? Well, this video is going to show you all of my graphic settings along with some extra bonus optional settings that you could do to improve the way your game looks. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so before we get started, let me say a quick disclaimer. If you go into your RuneLight sidebar up here and you're searching for a plugin that I name and it's not on your list, that means that it's in the plugin hub and you can get there by clicking on this little plug right here. And then you could search for the plugin I'm talking about. Once you find the plugin, you could just click the install button. Mine says remove because I've already had something installed. But you click install and then it'll go back over to your configuration tab. I've just had this client for so long, I don't really remember what comes pre-downloaded. So yeah, if I name something you don't have, it's in the plugin hub. Okay, but first things first, I like to play old school on full screen mode on my second monitor. If that's something you want to copy, you can by using these settings. So the first thing you want to do is go down to your little in game settings click on the little monitor to get to the display settings and then go down to game client layout and select resizable modern layout once you've done that you want to go up to the sidebar by clicking on the little arrow on the top of your runelight client and then you want to type in stretch and turn on stretched mode once it's on you want to click on the little configuration gear and then you have these four options here if you need performance mode, you can click that on. But the ones that I select are keep aspect ratio, and I have my resizable scaling to 93%. You could obviously change this around however you want, make it bigger or smaller, however you think looks the best for you. But because I make RuneScape videos, I like people to be able to see what's in my inventory in my videos. So I put it at 93% and it's pretty nice. The next thing we're gonna turn on is animation smoothing. So turn that one on, click on the little gear, and then select all three of these options. And what this pretty much does is basically like adds more frames to your character. So if I turn it off, I'm kind of jumping all around sporadically, but if I turn it on, it gets pretty smooth. My guy just looks around, it's very nice. So once you have on animation smoothing, the next thing you are going to want to do, if you have at least a basic computer, my computer was like 700 bucks to build and I can run this, but 117 HD. I know this one wasn't in the default client at first. Not sure if it is now. If it's not, it's in the plugin hub. So just type in 117 and download it. But anyway, once you have 117, you want to turn it on. The game will freeze for a second and it will be turned on. This looks so much better already. But then you could click the edit configuration button. And these are the settings that I run here. As I said, I have a mid tier PC, or at least I don't have a lot of crap downloaded to it. So it actually runs pretty decently or it might just be a higher and low end PC. I don't really know, but yeah, I built this thing for 700 bucks and I can run this. So you should be able to in 2024. If not, I have another option for you if you can't run 117 HD and that's gonna be the GPU plugin, which you can find in the timestamps down below. So if you can't run 117 HD without it crashing, GPU is the way to go and you can just skip to that part of the video. But anyway, back to the 117 HD. These are my settings. I got draw distance set to 50. I've got extended map loading set to three. Anti-aliasing I have on MSAA times four. What this basically does is it smooths out jagged lines. Okay, yeah, so you could see these lines on the wood right here, how it's kind of jagged. Anti-aliasing smooths those out. I do times four. And as you could see, those jagged lines are very smooth now. Not sure how well you could see that with my OBS recording, but you could definitely get through without any or with times two. I just like times four. But with the UI scaling mode, I use Catmull ROM. It makes everything a bit more sharpened because if you do nearest, it's like super sharpened, but it kind of gets blurry like you could really tell in the 10 here. My linear is pretty nice, but it also looks kind of blurry as well. Mitchell's a little less blurry. But I think the way to go is Catmull ROM personally. Sharpens it just enough to where it looks natural. And you could also run XBR. It's not my favorite. It kind of just makes everything super smooth as you guys could see here. Some people use it for thumbnails because they think it looks cleaner. It's not my favorite. I just do my thumbnails in Photoshop anyway. So UI scaling mode, I do Catmull ROM. Anisotropic filtering, I put at 16. You want to click unlock FPS. That'll let you get a lot more frames per second. V-Sync mode, I have on adaptive. FPS target, I just have a 60, but that's just because it's there. If you have unlock FPS checked, this is basically irrelevant. Uh, if you have colorblindness, you can check these out. Flashing effects, you can have on or off. It depends on what you prefer. Some places I believe like Barrows can do some sort of flashing effects to simulate lightning. 
which is pretty cool with 117, but it's too much for me. I don't really care that much. I just turn it off. Saturation, I always bump up to 110% just to make everything look a little bit more lively. Contrast, I have 105 just to make the darks a little darker. Brightness, I have the 25. And then here is what is cool about the dynamic lights. Let me show you in the dark here with a fire. So this is regularly how it looks in old school. You light a fire, it's just a fire on the ground right here. However, if you turn on dynamic lights, let's say we turn it on few, it actually acts like a light source and it lights up your character and the things around it. This eats up your performance. I usually just have mine on some because it's definitely better than none and it's better than few, I think. I kind of just like it, but you could do many. I don't really notice a huge, huge difference, but yeah, I just have mine on some. So it's enough to look cool, but it's not overkill. Other things that have dynamic lights, I believe some magic spells have dynamic lights. It looks super cool, like when you're in the dark in the wilderness and you use a fire strike or something. It's a glowing ball of fire. It looks so cool just going across the ground because it tracks it. It, it just looks really cool. So yeah, definitely have on dynamic lights if you can. If you can't, then that's just too bad. My old computer died every time I turn on dynamic lights. But yeah, projectile lights, those were the lights I was talking about with the fire strike, I guess. So have those clicked on too. NPC lights have all of this turned on. And then it comes down to shadows. So you can have them turned off completely and there's no shadows. You could have it on, which has shadows, but they're kind of blurry. And then you could have detailed, which gets more detailed. You can't really tell. Let me see here. So for example, these trees here, if you have no shadows, this is what it looks like. If you have shadows fast, it looks like this. It's just basically like two big black blobs. And then if you turn it on detailed, you can actually kind of see the edges of the leaves. So I have my shadows set to detailed and I have shadow transparency turned on. Shadow quality, I have medium 2K. It's completely optional, whatever one runs best on your PC. This also kind of eats up performance a little bit if you have it really high. I'm satisfied with medium 2K. You could go all the way up to 16K and it's like super detailed. You could literally see every single leaf in your character. You could see his shadow. That looks actually pretty crazy. That's really cool. But I'm gonna keep it on 2K just because, uh, yeah, it just helps my computer run better, especially when I'm recording videos. Shadow distance, it's up to you. I have mine on 30. Span shadow draw, optional. I have mine off. Uh, vanilla shadows, I have shown PVM. Normal mapping is checked. And then the last one is also checked. Environment, you can have a seasonal theme of what everything looks like. So this is summer. You can have it set to automatic, which is what it's actually on right now naturally. And then you can even turn it to autumn and it makes it like an autumn day. It's really, really cool. Just kind of hard to see the differences of trees because this looks like a maple but it's an oak like these trees they look a little whack and then there is also winter where it is snowing which is also very cool the reason i have mine set to summer is because i was making videos during christmas and i got tired of looking at the snow on the ground so i turned it to summer but for now i'm going to turn it actually back to automatic but it's completely optional for you guys what you want to do Fog depth mode I have on dynamic. Static fog depth is just for whenever you have static on instead of dynamic. What this is, is the blur on the outsides of your viewing distance. So for example, this is 25. You could bring the fog back all the way to zero and you have that harsh edge. And then with static fog depth, you could turn that up and it'll show how far it goes in. I just set mine to dynamic, does it automatically, not a problem. Ground fog I have turned on. That looks pretty cool when you're at Barrows. Even though I've never actually been to Barrows, uh, I've seen gameplay of it with ground fog turned on. It looks really cool. It's like the little hills of each Barrows brother is like poking out of the fog. But default sky, it's up to you. You guys could change around the colors of the sky box. I like the 117 Runelite HD. That's cool to me. Model textures is checked on. Ground textures is checked on. Texture resolution, it's up to you. I have mine at 256, so everything looks more detailed. Ground blending, I turn on. What this basically is, is it tries to hide the individual tiles. So as you guys can see all these little lines from each of the tiles, you turn on ground blending and it gets rid of those, which is very cool. And then I have underwater caustics on and HT Tazar reskin turned on. What the HD Tazar reskin does is it makes it like the 2008 version in RuneScape 3 before it was RuneScape 3. But you guys can check that out on your own. See if you like it when you're down in the caves. Model caching. I have model batching on, model caching on, and then 512, miscellaneous. I have the HD infernal cape turned on. That way it looks really nice. And then I have replace fishing spots on as well. And this makes the fishing spots actually easier to see. I don't have a color filter on and I don't mess with anything in experimental. I just leave it as is. Okay, 
So that is 117, but that's not all. There is still more to do to make some changes to make your game look a lot nicer, such as dark mode. But we'll do that after I show you my settings for GPU first, for those of you who have a lower end PC that can't run 117. So I'm gonna turn off 117, we're going to GPU mode. We'll turn that on, and you could already tell the difference from GPU off to GPU on. Looks way better already. I have my draw distance set to 90. Extended map loading is on three. Hide unrelated maps is checked. Remove color banding is also checked. It kind of gets rid of the shading lines. So as you can see on this tile, it's like it gets slightly darker each section. If you check remove color banding, it blends it. Anti-aliasing I have as disabled. I think on GPU, it just looks cleaner disabled. And I don't think it's really worth filtering. I mean, like it does look nice, but I don't really think you need it. UI scaling, obviously the same options. I'm using Catmull ROM again. Fog depth, I have a seven. Compute shaders is checked. Anisotropic filtering, I have as zero. Color blindness, I have as none. We're gonna check unlock FPS so that we get more frames. And then VSync mode, I have as adaptive. So yeah, with GPU, that's really all you can do, but it is a lot nicer because you could zoom all the way out and click really far away and your character will just start going there. It's way, way better than playing on the vanilla client. And honestly, I would use GPU, but I think 117 looks better for videos. So personally, I just use 117. All right, now let's get into dark mode. Let me turn 117 back on real quick. Let's get into dark mode. If you want dark mode in this game, the plugin you are going to need is resource packs. I think this one's actually in the plugin hub. So once you download it, install it, turn it on, and then click on the configuration. These are my options. I have use resource pack as hub. These three are blank. Hide side panel is not checked. And then just leave everything else as is. So what this does is it adds this little paintbrush on the side of your client so that you can click on it. And then here you could literally select any kind of plugin that you like. So this is called Dark Side of Gilinor. It looks kind of neat and changes your inventory a bit. Changes the stats a little bit. Uh, I'll open up the chat box. Yeah, see it has like bricks. Looks kind of cool when you highlight stuff. It's purple. You guys could check all these out yourself. Like this is RSHD. But uh, yeah, so the one I like to use is OSRS Dark Theme. And it looks very clean. It basically makes everything just a little darker. And it has the red highlights when you click on different things. It looks very, very nice. When you open up interfaces, it also makes these darker as well. So it just has a really, really clean look. Another one that's pretty close to this is Dark 2010 Scape. It just has the 2010 icons and everything. That one's pretty nice as well. But yeah, as I said, there's a whole bunch of these that you could try. But if you want dark mode, OSRS Dark Theme is my personal favorite. Okay, next up we have the camera settings. This is very good as well. Go to camera, make sure it's turned on, click the little gear, click on expand inner zoom limit. Because what this allows you to do, if you zoom all the way in, this is as far as I can zoom. I can't zoom anymore. If I click it, Boom, I could zoom in just a little bit more. This really helps with Fashionscape, let you check out your outfit a little more. It's also good for making YouTube videos if that's something that you're into. I have expand outer zoom limit to 400. That lets you zoom all the way out here. Isn't that awesome? Like I could literally from here, click on the bridge, the wizard's tower, and I will start walking there. Or I could even click in the intersection right below Drainer Manor, and I could be on my way there. Super, super cool. Expand pitch limit, I have turned on. Reset zoom position is 512. Zoom speed I have to 50, because I like this speed. If you want to be able to zoom in slower, turn it down. Faster, turn it up. Camera speed I have is one. Yeah, I, I just leave it there. I don't need to move any quicker. You can have it set to right click moves camera, where you just hold down right click and scroll like this. Yep, you can do that. I don't like that at all though. And I have right click menu blocks camera checked as well. But that's not all. There's also the camera smoothing plugin as well. So go back to your plugins, camera smoothing. I think this one's in the plugin hub. I don't like camera smoothing, but some people I know do. So if you turn this on, it'll give you a smooth rotation. So it's not as choppy. And you also have a smooth zoom. Like, look at that. Isn't that weird? It's almost nauseating. But uh, <laughs> I have the smoothness at the 30%. Uh, you can go all the way up. Like, let's say we went to... So like 77%, you could just tell the smoothness of like everything really. Yeah, look at that. That's that's cool. Like if you like that, you like that. I don't like that. I turn it off. But I wanted to let you guys know the options there. I also have detached camera. I wasn't going to put this in the video, but since it's here, I might as well. Detached camera is another one you can download from the plugin hub. What it lets you do is toggle a hotkey. So if I plus on the numpad, 
I can now use WASD. It's basically like an orb of Oculus. You could just move around and stuff like that. And then you just press numpad again or whatever button you have set to go back to regular. Uh, yeah, just want to show you guys that. Another graphics plugin here is the HD mini map. This is also completely optional. As you guys could see on the mini map right here, this is the regular one, HD turned on. It's like 2010, 2009, whenever they did that update. But yeah, it's just more HD. It doesn't make your regular map more HD, but it does make your mini map look a little more HD. Not my favorite. I prefer mine more clean and off. A graphics option I do run all the time though is low detail mode. I just love the way that this looks so much more because it gets rid of all this stuff. Like look at these stones and the grass and it just kind of looks ugly in my opinion. Some people don't like running low detail. I love it. I don't even need to run it. I just like the way it looks way more. It cleans everything up. You could go into the settings and you could change stuff like hide lower planes and stuff like that. But yeah, low detail mode is my favorite thing on here. Even on uh, GPU, low detail mode looks really good as well. But then we have another option here. And that option is going to be the mini map. So just mini map this time. Make sure that's turned on. Go into the settings here and you can click the zoom option. That allows you to zoom in and out. I don't think you could do that regularly in game, or if you can, I don't think it's to this extent, but yeah, I'd like to have mine zoomed all the way out. So if I don't zoom all the way out here and click, if I don't need to go that far, I could just click on the mini map from farther away. And then lastly, the last graphics thing I have to show you guys is custom cursor. So that's another one you can get. I think that's from the plugin hub as well. But yeah, turn it on, click the gear, and you could select any custom cursor. I use the RS3 silver one. I just love the way that it looks. But you could also do like the retro ones like we used to have all the way back in like 2006. Like the Dragon Dagger, Dragon Dagger P. Like all of these are preloaded and they're just up in here. Yeah, Dragon Simi. Look at that. But personally, I prefer RS3 Gold, RS3 Silver. But yeah, guys, that about sums it up for this video. If you're new here, be sure to check out my channel. I just completed a maxing a level 3 skiller series. The completed videos on my channel. It's the first video I've ever done that had over 100,000 views. It's seven hours long. And it's basically where I get a level 3, 99 everything that is not combat related besides Slayer. And the series I'm working on right now is actually the account that I'm on right now, which is a free to play level 3 skiller. So if any of those sound interesting to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I got playlists for those videos on my channel's page as well. So uh, yeah, guys, hope that this video helped you out and I will see you in the next one.